Tuesday, February 2nd, and we're going to read Liber XV, Ecclesiae, Gnosticae, Catholicae, Canon Missae, edited from the ancient documents in Assyrian and Greek by the Master Therion. 1. Of the Furnishings of the Temple. In the east, that is, in the direction of Boleskine, which is situated on the southeastern shore of Loch Ness in Scotland, two miles east of Foyers, is a shrine or high altar. Its dimensions should be seven feet in length, three feet in breadth, forty-four inches in height. It should be covered with a crimson altar cloth, on which may be embroidered fleur-de-lis in gold, or a sunblaze, or other suitable emblem. On each side of it should be a pillar or obelisk with countercharges in black and white. Below it should be the dais of three steps in black and white squares. Above it is the super altar, at whose top is the stella of revealing in reproduction, with four candles on each side of it. Below the stella is a place for the Book of the Law, with six candles on each side of it. Below this again is the Holy Grail, with roses on each side of it. There is room in front of the cup for the paten. On each side, beyond the roses, are two great candles. All this is enclosed within a great veil, forming the apex of an equilateral triangle, whose base is a line drawn between the pillars, is a small black square altar of two superimposed cubes. Taking this altar as the middle of the base of a similar and equal triangle, at the apex of the second triangle is a small circular font. Repeating, the apex of a third triangle is an upright tomb. Two of the officers of the mass, the priest bears the sacred lance and is clothed at first in a plain white robe. The priestess should be actually Virgo and Tacta, or specially dedicated to the service of the great order. She is clothed in white, blue, and gold. She bears the sword from a red girdle, and the paten and the hosts are the cates of light. The deacon, he is clothed in white and yellow. He bears the book of the law. Two children, they are clothed in white and black. One bears a pitcher of water and a cellar of salt. The other, a censer of fire and a casket of perfume. Three, of the ceremony of the introit. The deacon, opening the door of the temple, admits the congregation and takes his stand between the small altar and the font. There should be a doorkeeper to attend to the admission. The deacon advances and bows before the open shrine where the grail is exalted. He kisses the book of the law three times, opens it, and places it upon the superaltar. He turns west. The deacon, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I proclaim the law of light, life, love, and liberty in the name of I. The congregation, Love is the law, love under will. The deacon goes to his place between the altar of incense and the font, faces east, and gives the step and sign of a man and a brother. All imitate him, the deacon and all the people. I believe in one secret and ineffable Lord, and in one star, in the company of stars, of whose fire we are created, and to which we shall return, and in one Father of life, mystery of mystery, in his name chaos, the sole vice-regent of the sun, upon the earth, and in one air the nourisher of all that breathes. And I believe in one earth, the mother of us all, and in one womb, wherein all men are begotten, and wherein they shall rest, mystery of mystery, in her name, Babylon. And I believe in the serpent and the lion, mystery of mystery, in his name, Baphomet. And I believe in one Gnostic and Catholic church of light, life, love, and liberty, the word of whose law is Thelema. And I believe in the communion of saints. And, for as much as meat and drink are transmuted in us daily into spiritual substance, I believe in the miracle of the Mass. And I confess one baptism of wisdom, whereby we accomplish the miracle of incarnation. And I confess my life one, individual, and eternal, that was, and is, and is to come. Om. Music is now played. The child enters with the ear and the salt. The virgin enters with the sword and the paten. The child enters with the censer and the perfume. They face the deacon, deploying into the line from the space between the two altars. The virgin, greeting of heaven and earth. All give the hailing sign of a magician. The deacon leading. The priestess, the negative child on her left, the positive child on her right, ascends the steps of the high altar. They await her below. She places the paten before the grail. Having adored it, she descends, 
and with the children following her, the positive nets to her, she moves in a serpentine manner involving three and a half circles of the temple. Deosil about altar, Widdershins about font, Deosil about altar and font, Widdershins about altar, and so to the tomb in the west. She draws her sword over and pulls down the veil therewith. The priestess. By the power of iron I say unto thee, Arise, in the name of our Lord the Son, and of our Lord, that thou may administer the virtues to the brethren. She sheathes the sword. The priestess, issuing from the tomb, holding the lance erect with both hands, right over left, against his breast, takes the first three regular steps. He then gives the lance to the priestess, and gives the three penal signs. He then kneels and worships the lance with both hands, penitential music. The priest, I am a man among men. He takes again the lance and lowers it. He rises. The priest, how should I be worthy to administer the virtues to the brethren? The priestess takes from the child the water and the salt and mixes them in the font. The priestess, let the salt of the earth admonish the water to bear the virtue of the great sea. Genuflex, mother be thou adored. She returns to the west. Cross on priest with open hand doth she make over his forehead, breast, and body. Be the priest pure of body and soul. The priestess takes the censer from the child and places it on the small altar. She puts incense therein. Let the fire in the air make sweet the world. Genuflex. Father, be thou adored. She returns west and makes the cross with the censer before the priest thrice as before. Be the priest fervent of body and soul. The children resume their weapons as they are done with. The deacon now takes the consecrated robe from the high altar and brings it to her. She robes the priest in the robe of scarlet and gold. Be the flame of the sun thine ambience, O thou priest of the sun. The deacon brings down the crown from the high altar. The crown may be of gold or platinum or of electrum magicum, but with no other metals save the small proportions necessary to a proper alloy. It may be adorned with diverse jewels at will, but it must have the urea serpent twined about it, and the cap of maintenance must match the scarlet of the robe. Its texture should be velvet. Be the serpent thy crown, O thou priest of the Lord. Kneeling, she takes the lance between her open hands and runs them up and down upon the shaft eleven times, very gently. Be the Lord present among us. All give the hailing sign. The people, so mote it be. 4. Of the ceremony of the opening of the veil. The priest. Thee, therefore, whom we adore, we also invoke, by the power of the lifted lance. He raises the lance. All repeat hailing sign. A phrase of triumphant music. The priest takes the priestess by her right hand with his left, keeping the lance raised. I, priest and king, take thee, virgin, pure without spot. I upraise thee. I lead thee to the east. I set thee upon the summit of the earth. He thrones the priest upon the altar. The deacon and the children follow. They in rank behind him. The priestess takes the book of the law, resumes her seat, and holds it open on her breast with two hands, making a descending triangle with thumbs and forefingers. The priest gives the lance to the deacon to hold, and takes the ewer from the child, and sprinkles the priestess, making five crosses, forehead, shoulders, and thighs. The thumb of the priest is always between his index and medius, whenever he is not holding the lance. The priest takes the censer from the child and makes five crosses, as before. The children replace their weapons on their respective altars. The priest kisses the book of the law three times. He kneels for a space in adoration, with joined hands, knuckles closed, thumb in position as aforesaid. He rises and draws the veil over the whole altar. All rise and stand to order. The priest takes the lance from the deacon and holds it as before, as Osiris or Thoth. He circumnambulates the temple three times, followed by the deacon and the children as before. These, when not using their hands, keep their arms crossed upon their breasts. At the last circumnambulation they leave him and go to the place between the font and the small altar, where they kneel in adoration, their hands joined palm to palm and raised above their heads. All imitate this motion. The priest returns to the east and mounts the first step of the altar. The priest, O circle of stars, whereof our father is but the younger brother, marvel beyond imagination, the soul of infinite space, before whom time is ashamed, the mind bewildered, and the understanding dark. Not unto thee may we attain, unless thine image be love. Therefore, by seed and root and stem and bud, and leaf and flower and fruit, do we invoke thee. Then the priest answered and said unto the queen of space, kissing her lovely brows, and the dew of her light bathing his body in a sweet-smelling perfume of sweat. O Nuit, continuous one of heaven, let it be ever thus, that men speak not of thee as one, but as none, and let them not speak of thee at all, since thou art continuous. During this speech the priestess must have divested herself completely of the robe. See Liber 220, chapter 1, verse 62. The priestess. 
But to love me is better than all things. If under the night stars in the desert thou presently burnest mine incense before me, invoking me with a pure heart, and the serpent flame therein, thou shalt come a little to lie in my bosom. For one kiss wilt thou then be willing to give all, but whoso gives one particle of dust shall lose all in that hour. Ye shall gather goods and store of women and spices, ye shall wear rich jewels, ye shall exceed the nations of the earth in your splendor and pride, but always in the love of me. And so shall ye come to my joy. I charge you earnestly to come before me in a single robe, and covered with a rich headdress. I love you, I yearn to you, pale or purple, veiled or voluptuous, I am all pleasure in purple, and drunkenness of the innermost sense, desire you. Put on the wings and arouse the coiled splendor within you, come unto me, to me, to me, sing the rapturous love song unto me, burn to me the perfumes, wear to me the jewels, drink to me for I love you, I love you. I am the blue-lidded daughter of sunset, I am the naked brilliance of the voluptuous night sky, to me, to me. The priest mounts the step, the priest. O secret of secrets, that art hidden in the being of all that lives, not thee do we adore, for that which adoreth is also thou, thou art that, and that am I. I am the flame that burns in the heart of every man, and in the core of every star. I am life, and the giver of life, yet therefore is the knowledge of me the knowledge of death. I am alone, there is no God where I am. The deacon and all rise to their feet with the hailing sign. The deacon. But ye, O my people, rise up and awake. Let the rituals be rightly performed with joy and beauty. There are rituals of the elements and feasts of the times. A feast for the first night of the prophet and his bride. A feast for the three days of the writing of the book of the law. A feast for Tehuti and the child of the prophet, secret, O oh, prophet. A feast for the supreme ritual and a feast for the equinox of the gods. A feast for fire and a feast for water. A feast for life and a greater feast for death. A feast every day in your hearts in the joy of my rapture. A feast every night unto new in the pleasure of uttermost delight. The priest mounts the third step. The priest. Thou that art one, our Lord in the universe, the Son. Our Lord in ourselves, whose name is mystery of mystery uttermost being whose radiance enlightening the worlds is also the breath that maketh every god even and death to tremble before thee by the sign of light the equal armed cross appear thou glorious upon the throne of the sun make open the path of creation and of intelligence between us and our minds enlighten our understanding encourage our hearts let thy light crystallize itself in our blood fulfilling us of resurrection <laughs> The priestess, there is no law beyond do what thou wilt. The priest parts the veil with his lance. During the previous speeches, the priestess has, if necessary, as in savage country, resumed her robe. The priest, I O, I O, I O, I A O, Sabeo, Curie, Abrasix, Curie, Mithras, Curie, Bale, I O Pan, I O Pan Pan, I O, Isturos, I O, Athanatos, Io, Abrotos, Io, Ieo, Care, Fale, Care, Panphage, Care, Pangenitor, Hagios, 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 Ieo. The priestess is seated with the paten in her right hand and the cup in her left. The priest presents the lance which she kisses eleven times. She then holds it to her breast, while the priest, falling at her knees, kisses them, his arms stretched along her thighs. He remains in this adoration while the deacon intones the collex. All stand to order, with due guard, that is, feet square, hands with linked thumbs held loosely. This is the universal position when standing, unless other direction is given. 5. Of the office of the collects, which are eleven in number. The Son. The Deacon. Lord visible and sensible of whom this earth is but a frozen spark, turning about thee with annual and diurnal motion, source of light, source of life, let thy perpetual radiance hearten us to continual labor and enjoyment, so that as we are constant partakers of thy bounty, we may in our particular orbit give out light and life, sustenance and joy to them that revolve about us without diminution of substance or effulgence forever. The people, so mote it be, the Lord, the deacon, Lord secret and most holy, source of light, source of life, source of love, source of liberty, be thou ever constant and mighty within us, force of energy, fire of motion, with diligence let us ever labor with thee, that we may remain in thine abundant joy. The people, so mote it be, the moon, the deacon, lady of night, that turning ever about us art, now visible and now invisible in thy season, be thou favorable to hunters and lovers, and to all men that toil upon the earth, and to all mariners upon the sea. The people, so mote it be, 
the lady, the deacon, giver and receiver of joy, gate of life and love, be thou ever ready, thou and thine handmaiden, in thine office of gladness, the people, so mote it be, the saints, the deacon. Lord of life and joy, that art the might of man, that art the essence of every true God that is upon the surface of the earth, continuing knowledge from generation unto generation, thou adored of us upon heaths and in woods, on mountains and in caves, openly in marketplaces and secretly in the chambers of our houses, in temples of gold and ivory, in marble as in these other temples of our bodies, we worthily commemorate them worthy that did old adore thee and manifest thy glory unto men. At each name the deacon signs a cross with thumb between index and medius. At ordinary mass it is only necessary to commemorate those whose names are italicized, with wording as is shown. Lao and Siddhartha and Krishna and Tahuti, Moshe, Dionysus, Muhammad and Tumegatherion, with these also Hermes, Pan, Priapus, Osiris and Melchizedek, Cam and Amun and Mentu, Heracles, Orpheus and Odysseus, with Virgilius, Cautilus, Martialus, Rabelais, Swinburne, and many and holy bard, Apollonius, Tyanaeus, Simon Magus, Manes, Pythagoras, Basilides, Valentinus, Barcedonis, and Hippolytus, that transmitted the light of the Gnosis to us their successors and their heirs, with Merlin, Arthur, Cameret, Parzival, and many another prophet, priest, and king, that bore the lance and cup, the sword and disc, against the heathen, and these also, Carolus Magnus and his paladins, with William of Chiron, Frederick of Hoffenstaufen, Roger Bacon, Jacobus Burgundus Molensis the Martyr, Christian Rosenkreutz, Ulrich von Hutten, Paracelsus, Michael Meyer, Roger Borgia, Pope Alexander VI, Jakob Bohm, Francis Bacon, Lord Verulam, Andrea, Robertus de Fluctibus, Giordano Bruno, Johannes D, Sir Edward Kelly, Thomas Vaughan, Elias Ashmole, Molinos, Adam Weishaupt, Wolfgang von Goethe, William Blake, Ludovicus Rex Bavari, Richard Wagner, Alphonse Louis Constant, Frederick Nietzsche, Hargrave Jennings, Carl Kellner, Forlong Dukes, Sir Richard Payne Knight, Paul Gowdwin, Sir Richard Francis Burton, Dr. Gerard N. Kaus, Dr. Theodore Royce, Sir Alistair Crowley, Carl Johannes Germer, and Major Grady Lewis McMurtry. O sons of the Lion and the Snake, with all thy saints we worthily commemorate them worthy that were and are and are to come. May their essence here be present, potent, puissant, and paternal to perfect this feast. The people, so mote it be. The earth, the deacon, mother of fertility on whose breast lieth water, whose cheek is pressed by air, and in whose heart is the sun's fire, womb of all life, recurring grace of seasons, answer favorably the prayer of labor, and to pastures and husbandmen be thou propitious. The people, so mote it be. The principles, the deacon. Mysterious energy, triform, mysterious matter, and fourfold and sevenfold division, the interplay of which things weave the dance of the veil of life upon the face of the spirit. Let there be harmony and beauty in your mystic loves, that in us may be health and wealth and strength and divine pleasure according to the law of liberty. Let each pursue his will as a strong man that rejoiceth in his way, as of the course of a star that blazeth forever among the joyous company of heaven. The people, so mote it be. Birth, the deacon, be thou our auspicious, and the gate of life open in peace and in well-being, so that she that beareth children may rejoice, and that babe catch life with both hands. The people, so mote it be. Marriage, the deacon, upon all that this day unite with love under will let fall success, may strength and steel unite to bring forth ecstasy and beauty answer beauty. The people, so mote it be. Death, the deacon, term of all that liveth, whose name is inscrutable, be favorable unto thus in thine hour. The people, so mote it be. The end. The deacon. Unto them from whose eyes the veil of life hath fallen, may there be granted the accomplishment of their true wills, whether they will absorption in the infinite, or to be united with their chosen and preferred, or to be in contemplation, or to be at peace, or to achieve the labor and heroism of incarnation on this planet or another, or in any star, or aught else. Unto them may there be granted the accomplishment of their wills, yea, the accomplishment of their wills. Om. people, so might it be. All sit. The deacon and the children attend the priest and the priestess, ready to hold any appropriate weapon as may be necessary. 6. On the consecration of the elements. The priest makes the five crosses on paten and cup, four on paten alone, five on cup alone. The priest. Life of man upon earth, fruit of labor, sustenance of endeavor, thus be thou nourishment of the spirit. He touches the host with the lance. 
by the virtue of the rod, be this bread the body of God, he takes the host. Toi tu este tu soma moi. He kneels, adores, rises, turns, shows host to the people, turns, replaces host, and adores music. He takes the cup. Vehicle of the joy of man upon earth, solace of labor, inspiration of endeavor, thus be thou ecstasy of the spirit. He touches the cup with the lance. By the virtue of the rod, be this wine the blood of God. He takes the cup. Toi tu esti tu potrion toi amatos moi. He kneels, adores, rises, turns, shows the cup to the people, turns, replaces the cup, and adores. Music. For this is the covenant of resurrection. He makes the five crosses on the priestess. Accept, O Lord, the sacrifice of life and joy, true warrants of the covenant of resurrection. The priest offers the lance to the priestess who kisses it. He then touches her between the breasts and upon the body. He then flings out his arm upward as comprehending the whole shrine. Let this offering be borne upon the waves of ether to our Lord and Father the Son, that traveleth over the heavens in his name. On. He closes his hands, kisses the priestess between the breasts, and makes three great crosses over the paten, the cup, and himself. He strikes his breast. All repeat his action. Hear ye all, saints of the true church of old time, now essentially present. That of ye we claim heirship, with ye we claim communion. From ye we claim benediction in the name of Ayeo. He makes three crosses on Patton and Cup together. He uncovers the cup, genuflects, takes the cup in his left hand and the host in his right. He makes three crosses on Patton and Cup together. He uncovers the cup, genuflects, takes the cup in his left hand and the host in his right. With the host, he makes the five crosses on the cup. He elevates the host in the cup. The bell strikes. Agios, 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 Aeo. He replaces the host in the cup and adores. 7. Of the office of the anthem. The priest. Thou who art I, beyond all I am, who hast no nature and no name, who art when all but thou are gone, thou, center and secret of the sun, thou, hidden spring of all things known and unknown, thou aloof alone, thou, the true fire within the reed, brooding and breeding, source and seed, of life, love, liberty and light, thou beyond speech and beyond sight, thee I invoke my faint fresh fire, kindling as mine intense aspire, thee I invoke abiding one, the center and secret of the sun, and that most holy mystery of which the vehicle am I, appear most awful and most mild, as it is lawful in thy child. The chorus. For of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit is the norm. Male, female, quintessential one, man being veiled in woman form. Glory and worship in the highest, thou dove mankind that deifiest, being that race most royally run to spring sunshine through winter storm. Glory and worship be to thee, sap of world ash, wonder tree. First semi-chorus men. Glory to thee from gilded tomb, second semi-chorus women. Glory to thee from waiting womb. Men, glory to thee from earth unplowed. Women, glory to thee from virgin vowed. Men, glory to thee, true unity of the eternal trinity. Women, glory to thee, thy sire and dam, and self of I am that I am. Men, glory to thee, beyond all term, thy spring of semen, thy seed and germ. Women, glory to thee, eternal son, thou one and three, thou three and one. Chorus, glory and worship unto thee, sap of the world ash, wonder tree. These words are to form the substance of the anthem, but the whole or any part thereof should be set to music, which may be as elaborate as art can devise. But even should other anthems be authorized by the Father of the Church, this shall hold its place as the first of its kind, the Father of all others. 8. Of the mystic marriage and the consummation of the elements. The priest takes the patent between the index and medius of the right hand. The priestess clasps the cup in her right hand. The priest, Lord most secret, bless this spiritual food unto our bodies bestowing upon us health and wealth and strength and joy and peace, and that fulfillment of will and love under will that is perpetual happiness. He makes the cross with patent and kisses it. He uncovers the cup, genuflects, rises, music. He takes the host and breaks it over the cup. He replaces the right-hand portion in the patent. He breaks off a particle of the left-hand portion. Toi tu esti tu spermamu, o peter estin, o huisos dia, tonumo agion, Om, Om, Om. He replaces the left hand part of the host. The priestess extends the lance point with her left hand to receive the particle. The priest clasps the cup in his left hand. 
Together they depress the lance point in the cup. The priest and the priestess. Horeel you. The priest takes the lance. The priestess covers the cup. The priest genuflects, rises, bows, joins hands. He strikes his breast. The priest. O lion and O serpent that destroy the destroyer, be mighty among us. O lion and O serpent that destroy the destroyer, be mighty among us. O lion and O serpent that destroy the destroyer, be mighty among us. The priest joins hands upon the breast of the priestess and takes back his lance. He turns to the people, lowers and raises the lance, and makes the cross upon them. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The people, love is the law, love under will. He lowers the lance and turns to east. The priestess takes the lance in her right hand. With her left hand she offers the patent. The priest kneels. The priest, in my mouth be the essence of the life of the sun. He takes the host with the right hand, makes the cross with it on the paten, and consumes it. Silence. The priestess takes, uncovers, and offers the cup as before. The priest. In my mouth be the essence of the joy of the earth. He takes the cup, makes the cross on the priestess, drains it, and returns it. Silence. He rises, he takes the lance, and turns to the people. The priest. There is no part of me that is not of the gods. Those of the people who intend to communicate, and none other should be present, having signified their intention, a whole cake of light, and a whole goblet of wine, have been prepared for each one. The deacon marshals them, they advance one by one to the altar, the children take the elements and offer them. The people communicate, as did the priest, uttering the same words in an attitude of resurrection. There is no part of me that is not of the gods. The exceptions to this part of the ceremony are when it is of the nature of a celebration, in which case none but the priest communicate, or part of the ceremony of marriage, where none other save the two be married, partake part of the ceremony of baptism, when only the child baptized partakes, and of confirmation at puberty, when only the persons confirmed partake. The sacrament may be reserved by the priest for administration to the sick in their homes. The priest closes all within the veil. With the lance he makes the cross on the people thrice thus. The priest. The Lord bless you. The Lord enlightens your minds and comfort your hearts and sustain your bodies. The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of your true wills, the great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom and perfect happiness. He goes out, the deacon and children following, into the tomb of the West. Music. Voluntary. Note, the priestess and other officers never partake of the sacrament, they being, as it were, part of the priest himself. Note, certain secret formula of this mass are taught to the priest in his ordination.